Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Brittany. Today we're going to be talking all about chocolate. If you're wondering how to figure out the difference between chocolate options at the store or what type of chocolate to use for different projects, then this video is for you. If you like learning about chocolate and other sweet things, just go ahead and give this video a like and subscribe to the channel and let's get started. So before we talk about what different kinds of chocolate there are, we need to have a little lesson first on where chocolate comes from. It all starts on the cacao tree, which grows pods called cacao or cocoa pods. And I have some here. So these are dried cacao pods. And this one you can here has um, the seeds and fruit inside still. And this one has been cut open so that you can see the inside. So inside each pod is the fruit and inside each fruit is about 30 to 50 seeds. And those seeds are called cacao or cocoa beans. The seeds get taken out, cleaned, then fermented and then dried. Now, if you take the dried cacao beans and crunch them up, you'll get something that you've probably heard of, cacao nibs. And if you take the cacao nibs and grind those up, you'll get something called cacao powder. And the difference between cacao powder and cocoa powder is that cacao powder is raw and cocoa powder is processed at a high temperature. Now, these cocoa nibs can also be finely ground to create cocoa mass or chocolate liqueur, which is also the same as unsweetened chocolate. Cocoa mass or chocolate liqueur has two important parts to it, cocoa solids and cocoa butter. Those can be separated and then combined with other ingredients like milk, sugar, and other flavorings to make many different types of chocolate. So now let's talk about all of those different types of chocolates that you might come across. And I'm going to break this discussion up into three different categories. The first category is not chocolate. These types have no chocolate in them whatsoever. The second category is compound or stabilized chocolate. And these types have very little or no amounts of cocoa butter in them and instead use other fats in its place. The third category is real chocolate, which is Kuvacher chocolate. And then I've also thrown in the other various forms and stages of chocolate into this category to discuss. Now to be categorized as Kuvacher chocolate, the cocoa butter percentage must be higher than 31%. So let's get the not chocolate category out of the way first. Remember this product has no chocolate in it whatsoever. In this category, we have candy melts. Um, the only exception would be the cocoa flavored ones because they do have a little bit of cocoa powder in them usually, so technically they have a little bit of chocolate product, but for the most part, candy melts, not chocolate. And then most white chocolate buttons, appeals, wafers, snaps, and white chocolate chips are also not chocolate. Even Kuvacher chocolate only includes cocoa butter. It doesn't have cocoa solids, which gives it the chocolate taste. So um, anything white chocolate that also doesn't have cocoa butter is honestly not even chocolate at all. So the reason candy melts and other white chocolate products are not chocolate is because they don't have any part of the cocoa plant in them at all. They are basically just sugar, oil, flavoring, and dyes. They are basically Franken chocolate. <laughs> Some popular brands for candy melts you'll see are um, Wilton, Sweet Tooth Fairy, and then some popular brands for vanilla or white chocolate um, melting, candy coating products are Ghirardelli Melting Wafers, Van Leer Snaps, Merkin's White Buttons, Guitard Vanilla Appeals, Guitard White Ribbon Coating, anything like that. So what is the not chocolate category good for? Well, they work great for making garnishes or decorations for cakes or small desserts, piping and decorating small treats, hot cocoa bombs, or for dipping cake bites. I would categorize these as more hobby or craft. You can even find them at Michael's and most grocery stores. Moving on to category number two, which is compound or stabilized chocolate. And remember, these products have little amounts or no cocoa butter in them and usually use 
another type of fat in its place. Uh, most of the time, some sort of vegetable oil, palm oil, things like that. There are many varieties in this category and each is formulated different depending on its purpose. So you have things called buttons, appeals, snaps, wafers, coating, and the cocoa flavored candy melts along with milk or dark chocolate chips. So all your buttons, appeals, snaps, wafers are basically created to use in place of tempered chocolate. And if you melt them correctly, you can use them to mold chocolates, dip chocolates, uh, make chocolate decorations, or even pipe with them. Now, chocolate chips are formulated a bit differently than the other items in this category and are generally used just for baking. Now, if you try to melt them and use them for making chocolates, you will notice that they aren't quite the same. They're purposely made to stay more stable and less fluid. When I'm using compound chocolate, I like to use Van Leer um, chocolate snaps and Van Leer milk chocolate snaps and some other popular brands for appeals, wafers, and buttons, along with Van Leer are Guitard, Ghirardelli, and Merkins. Now our third and last category is real chocolate, which is really just chocolate. <laughs> and remember this category consists of Kuvacher chocolate and other pure chocolate products. And in order for a chocolate to be considered Kuvacher, it must have more than 31% of cocoa butter in it. Now, within this category, there are a lot of types. Now, earlier we talked, we talked about. <laughs> now, earlier we talked about chocolate liqueur, which is unsweetened chocolate that still contains cocoa solids or cocoa mass and cocoa butter, nothing else. No sweetener, no sugar. And this, this is what mine looks like. They're just in little blocks. You do not want to eat this. I use this for baking. Um, I have a brownie recipe that calls for unsweetened chocolate and you add the sugar in yourself. There is also cocoa powder. You've all seen this. It's classic and it's just unsweetened chocolate in a powder form. You can also buy cocoa butter alone and you can buy it in little pellets or in a powdered form and this can be useful for helping you temper chocolate and also for decorating molded chocolates and then we have Kuvacher chocolate which can come in a variety of different formulas and flavors but the main three types are dark milk and white now dark Kuvacher chocolate contains cocoa solids cocoa butter and sugar and then even within the dark chocolate category, depending on the amount of sugar and cocoa solids that you have, you would get different percentages along with bittersweet and semi-sweet chocolates. So the dark chocolate couverture that I'm currently using is by the brand Calibit, and it is considered semi-sweet and contains 55% cocoa solids. Next, you would have your milk chocolate couverture, which would contain cocoa solids, cocoa butter, sugar, and milk. So this milk chocolate that I bought today is also by the brand Calibit and it has 33.6% cocoa solids. And if you check the ingredient list, it has sugar, cocoa butter, whole milk powder, and unsweetened chocolate, and then an emulsifier and natural vanilla flavor. And then your white chocolate couverture would have no cocoa solids, but it would have cocoa butter, sugar, and milk. And the brand of white chocolate that I have is also Calibit, and the ingredient list is sugar, cocoa butter, dry whole milk, uh, soy lecithin, which is an emulsifier, and natural vanilla flavor. And outside of those main three categories of couverture, there's also a new chocolate on the scene. I think it's new as in like the last five years. Um, and I just tried it for the first time this year, but it is called Ruby Chocolate. And what makes Ruby Chocolate look and taste different is actually the way that the beans are processed. And if we look at the ingredient list, it has sugar, cocoa butter, non-fat dry milk, dry whole milk, unsweetened chocolate, soy lecithin, citric acid, and natural flavor. So I would say this is the most like milk chocolate because it contains unsweetened chocolate, plus cocoa butter, sugar, and milk. It just looks differently because it's made differently. And if you want to see me use this for the first time, try tempering it and make a little fun project, check out this video. And something I've heard of and I saw at the store this morning when I ran to get chocolate, 
is a white gold chocolate, which is basically white chocolate flavored with caramel. So the ingredients are cocoa butter, sugar, whole milk, milk sugar. So basically it's white chocolate and then they take um, caramelized sugar, caramel, and include that in it. So it's like a caramel flavored white chocolate and it is Kuvature, so, and it's also by Calibut. And I'm gonna try this out soon. So some brands that you will be able to find Kuvature chocolate are Coco Berry, Calibut, Ghirardelli, um, Guitard, Noel, Valrona. I'm sure there's many other brands. I just am not as familiar with them. My favorite is Calibut. Now, something I haven't quite mentioned yet is that when you're working with Kuvature chocolate, it must be tempered first. Now, earlier we talked about compound chocolate, which is stabilized for you because of the types of fats or oils they use in it. Essentially, all you have to do is carefully melt it and then use it as you would tempered chocolate. With Kuvature chocolate, the way in which you melt it by hitting certain temperatures is called tempering, and that process encourages certain types of crystals to form so that it sets up properly and has a nice snap. To learn about tempering, you can check out my tempering video above where I go into the whole process in much more detail. Now let's talk for just a second about price. You can probably guess that Kuvature chocolate is the most expensive. It is the most delicious and the highest quality. Compound chocolate can still be kind of expensive, but more affordable than Kuvature chocolate. It can also taste pretty good depending on what brand you have, and a lot of people can't even tell the difference between Kuvature and compound chocolate. In fact, in America, we're all used to like crappy chocolate, so <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> and then candy melts and candy coatings are a lot cheaper and probably on the same level as chocolate chips as far as price goes. And as far as taste, candy melts are, I think, the lowest on the totem pole sometimes can be pretty weird depending on what color you're using. The dyes can affect the flavor and honestly, they're not that great. They're great for practicing and learning techniques, but as far as like eating, they're not my favorite thing. And then you may see cacao powder and cacao nibs at a specialty store or a natural food store. Um, they've gotten pretty expensive because they are said to be a superfood. So this morning at the chocolate store, I paid $10 for these, so they're pretty expensive and the bag is only eight ounces. But comparing cacao nibs and cacao powder to cocoa powder, cocoa powder, we've all seen this, pretty inexpensive. So those are the chocolate basics. <laughs> I know because of all the different combinations and categories, it can be pretty confusing. And if you've watched some of my other videos like on hot cocoa bombs or cake bites or even molded chocolates, I sometimes call candy melts and compound chocolate chocolate. They technically aren't chocolate, but they work similarly to chocolate and for the purposes of decoration and technique, sometimes it's just easier to call them chocolate. I know that some people get a little uppity with what you're allowed to call chocolate and not, but for me, I just think it's important for people to start where they're at with the knowledge they have and practice their chocolate skills and techniques however they can with the resources they have available to them. And if that is with candy melts, that is great. If it's with Kuvature chocolate, that's even better. I mean, Kuvature chocolate is always best. It tastes better, it works better, and it's higher quality. But if you're just practicing or just getting started, you might wanna go for the compound chocolate. I often will use compound or stabilized chocolate while I'm filming videos because filming takes a lot of time and by taking out that step of having to temper my chocolate, make sure it's tempered properly, it saves me a lot of time to just melt down compound chocolate and be able to demonstrate with that. And like we discussed earlier, Kuvature chocolate is more expensive than compound, so it also saves me a little bit of money. Anyway, to summarize all that, um, the local store, where I buy my chocolate called Gigi's. They have a saying that goes like this, use compound chocolate for less stress and Kuvature chocolate to impress. <laughs> 
And I feel like that's a pretty good saying to live by when it comes to chocolate. Unless you're really experienced and you have tempering down or you have a tempering machine and it's, it's easy to just grab your tempered chocolate and use it. All right, everyone. I know that was a lot of information and it's all I've got for you today. I hope that you learned something new about chocolate. If you did and you liked this video, please like this video down below. It helps me out a lot. Also, I created a chart to simplify how each type of chocolate is different, what the uses are, how expensive, some of the brands. If you'd like to get a copy and download that, just check out the link in the description box below and right here. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, today's the day. If you'd like to see more videos about chocolate, check out my chocolate playlist right here and also check out this fun chocolate video. Thanks so much for watching today and I will see you soon. Bye.